we have found that through this process we're able to get a coherent information to our communities that we're all hearing the same thing from the same source. And we plan to be here on every Wednesday at 2.30 unless uh, circumstances dictate otherwise. So the unified command, you know, that's so that we can all do the uh, better job communicating so that we can uh, work together so your livelihood. And so you will hear about us individually having news conferences possibly during the week where the mayor will be attending to run in the city, uh, the business of the city, where Dr. Isho will be running the business of the uh, county health department. But when it comes to kind of the, what we're doing uh, jointly, you will hear it at this uh, meeting. And so I look forward to being able to communicate with everyone uh, in this forum. So Dr. Isho. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor. It's a pleasure working with this team. We've got a real good team. And the real purpose is to try to bring all the assets under unified command of what the city assets have, what the county assets have, what the health department has assets have, in order to get a better outcome, get people back uh, to work, and keep it safe. Uh, so I think we're going to have some questions. And I just thank everybody for participating. And it's a pleasure being with uh, the, the citizens of Mobile County today. So my understanding is, is that we have some questions uh, that, uh, that uh, you'll read the questions out to me and then I, I will maybe flip to Commissioner Ludgood or Dr. Isho, depending on who we think the, is best qualified to answer that question. So first question. Mobile County has the most deaths in the state. Why is that? Perhaps, and what are some of the measures being taken to limit deaths? Does the commissioner or mayor have concerns about a particular community or population within their jurisdiction? So you asked really several questions in one, or you made several points in that. And you, one of the, the first part of that was, uh, why does Mobile have the most deaths in the state? And I think at this point, there will just be a lot of speculation as to why that has occurred. And you know, I'll give you, I'll make an observation. A lot of this information, I'm not sure could be proved with the data that we have in hand, and so some of it's just anecdotal. But you know, early on, there were uh, some of the questions that were being asked to the people that had been ex that were sick. Uh, you know, there was there was a connection to New Orleans because of the proximity that we have to New Orleans, because of the relationships our citizens have. And I'm not saying that to blame it on New Orleans, but it. It's a point that needs to be made about the infectious nature of this disease that just through a social interaction in New Orleans, or it, or it could have been somewhere else. But in this particular case, because we know New Orleans was a hotbed, I think that that did impact the city of Mobile, maybe more so than it did other cities in the state. And so really I'll flip to Dr. Eyeshold, and maybe he's got some data or something else that he would add to that. Well, fortunately, uh, our death rate compared to other states uh, is is not uh, as bad as others. So the main thing is that the deaths uh, in Mobile County, uh, we have 38 uh, identified, 31 in Jefferson County. If we look at the deaths per 100,000, uh, that's nine deaths per 100,000 in Mobile County and five deaths per 100,000 people in population, so we are higher. But the numbers, fortunately, are relatively low. And when we've had what are called cluster outbreaks, and y'all have heard about it in the news and in some places. So where we have a rapid spread of disease among a very small population who are at high risk, we unfortunately end up with higher numbers within that population. Uh, and that's a challenge out of the uh, long-term care facilities. We have uh, over 30 facilities, but uh, over 90% of those uh, have not had a single case of COVID-19, uh, maybe 87% or something like that. But a large number have not had any cases of COVID-19. And when that does occur with a high-risk population, in close proximity to each other, then the outcome is uh, not good. Uh, 
I, I think it's a fair statement to say that we're all concerned about all of our students. And although we've seen a greater incidence of this disease in certain populations, we're doing everything we can to make sure that everyone has access to testing, that the testing is free, that the sites are located wherever anyone can get to it without uh, a transportation problem. We are trying to make sure that those access issues are are covered, and I think that's that's what we need to be doing, uh, rather than focusing on where it is, just to make sure everyone in our community has what they need to make sure that they're tested, and if they are tested, then treated. Uh, next question. With the news of the COVID-19 outbreak at Linwood Nursing Home, what steps will be taken? Have you been in contact with the facility? And if so, what steps will be taken to help with the outbreak? So I think that there will be two answers to that. One, I'll give you one, and then uh, Dr. Asha will give you one. Uh, and it's really pointed toward the same thing, and that is to make sure uh, that we explain exactly what happened. Upon being told that there was a possible outbreak in Linwood, uh, Public Safety Director Jim Barber reached out to him and we sent as much uh, the personal protective equipment as we had and that they requested that we could to assist them, but we also sent some testing equipment and actually coordinated the testing of their employees to see if anybody, uh, which, one, which of those employees were shedding the virus at that time. So it was a joint effort of the things that the health department does just whenever there's a situation like that, and I'll let him tell you how they uh, address an issue like that. Thank you very much. Uh, every nursing home is a, a little different circumstance, but really we communicate with the uh, long-term care facilities on a regular basis at the health department, talk to them about preventive measures, talk to them how to limit the spread of the disease if they have an outbreak, uh, working with them about getting adequate testing, getting personal protective equipment, do the patients need to go to the hospital, and if no, how can we contain uh, this, uh, this highly infective disease within uh, the, the confines of the institution. So it's, it's really, it depends case by case. The most important way is to prevent the spread. And again, uh, large percentage of the facilities have not had a case, knock on wood. We, we will continue to work closely with them, but uh, there are just many, many moving parts in that particular uh, area is isolate, diagnose, isolate, and prevent the further spread. Just to follow up on that question, mm -hmm. is there any idea what's happening there that, and is there any way that it can be contained? And also, um, there's word that the National Guard is here to help. Could you be more specific and let us know what's going on? Yes, the National Guard uh, was requested uh, for their assistance on decontaminating a uh, nursing home facilities, I'm not sure if Linwood is going to go through that process. The first thing is to work with the facilities and their management. If they have a contract with uh, appropriate uh, commercial company to come in and clean and uh, sanitize the facility, uh, then we will work with that particular facility. The National Guard is the agency of last resort. We thank the governor for making it available to us but uh, we will use them as, uh, as we need, uh, and they are willing to serve, uh, and they've all been specially trained for this particular operation. The interesting thing is we, is we deal with the nursing homes. Again, it's containment, containment uh, once we have a case, and then prevention of further spread. Uh, the most common thing that we are focusing on in public health are the public areas, the community areas where people may come in to watch television to make sure that those things are completely clean as much as they can to keep the spread of the virus. We've limited the number of people going into the uh, long-term care facilities by public health order, and we're sorry to separate the family members from their loved ones, but we really cannot allow this virus to get into this population, it, if, if at all possible. So uh, that's the main methods the, that we're using. Uh, and again, uh, your mother was right, wash your hands frequently. Uh, nursing homes, assisted living facilities are working on all those uh, conditions every single day 
uh, and their employees are dedicated, hardworking, uh, and we commend them for the effort they're doing. Okay, next question. Some businesses are opening back up against orders. Many of these business owners are running out of money. What do you say to them? So um, this morning we had a situation similar to that. Uh, you know, there are individuals who run out of money, there are businesses that run out of money. And the majority of the cases, there is um, a stream of re a revenue or a bucket of money that's been provided by either the federal government or the state government to help people uh, offset the loss of their wages or to backstop their business. And there are some situations though where individuals do not qualify for that and that's where it gets to be the most uh, uh, most anxiety, uh, the most um, opportunity. And for some of those, you know, at this point in time, you know, we don't have a good answer to say that you can go here and you will get this. But today, earlier with the conversation with the uh, governor's chief of staff, you know, we talked about some of these voids that are out there and what can be done to fill those voids. And so I don't have an answer just at this time for some of the people that are out there wondering, you know, I haven't gotten a check, when am I going to get my check? Uh, but this is being worked on. For those that listened to the governor's announcement yesterday, <coughs> Um, it was the Department of Labor explained that they had hired an outside consultant to start handling claims, that they had really ramped up their ability to get claims processed. And so from, the, from those who are expecting money uh, from an unemployment standpoint, I think that you'll start seeing that flow real quickly. Commissioner, do you have any comment on that? But, okay. Back to me. Viewers are saying that employees at big box stores like Walmart and Sierra Land and at Costco and Mobile are testing positive, but that it's being quiet by their companies. Can the health department verify any cases in big, big box store employees, especially those specific stores? And how is the health department keeping shoppers safe? I'll make an observation then let him answer the second part of that. You know, uh, they say, I'm not sure who they is, but there are a lot of people out there that are saying stuff that maybe not uh, is exactly right. And that's not to say the person that sent that question didn't know what they were talking about, but we have to be careful of speculating on what a company is doing and what a company is um, not doing. And so Dr. Isho, I know there is protocol if they find out that somebody, you know, is shedding the virus, that there are certain things that can be done that there's a social responsibility on the individual that should self-impose, you know, to stand down. But there are exceptions that he can speak to, especially when it comes to people that are dealing with COVID patients. And so I'll let you pick it up. First of all, I think the, the big box stores have been very, very important uh, during this time in giving people access to absolutely needed groceries and uh, uh, medical supplies and pharmacy products, uh, it unfortunately uh, disproportionately impacts uh, the smaller industry and business. We have uh, the question, do we know of any employees in big box stores that are COVID positive and continuing to work? And the answer is no. Anybody that we find out that's COVID positive, we actually have the authority to quarantine them if they do not do what we require for their period of time uh, to stay at home and isolate themselves. Uh, we've had to work with some jurisdictions and their police departments uh, to place quarantine orders uh, and to encourage people to do the right thing. But, but the employers take it very seriously. The health department takes it very seriously. Uh, and any time we find somebody with a positive test, we have <clears throat> contact information that we follow up. Uh, on those individuals and we're ramping up as we go forward uh, with uh, re-emerging from stay at home to being able to test more people uh, and be able to do more tracking of individuals. So uh, the answer to the question is we have no knowledge of any individual who's COVID-19 positive continuing to work at a big box store. Thank you. 
Okay. This is for the mayor. How is the city working to ramp up testing to get it to a level that would be acceptable to reopen? So that's a joint effort talking about ramping up. It's not just the city's responsibility. If you're talking about the city of Mobile, it is the unified command of us working together. I would venture to say that we uh, today we have as much capacity to test as any other city our size. Uh, we were slow getting to the game because we did not have a local laboratory that uh, was providing respiratory uh, testing. But I would put um, Synergy Labs and the services that we're getting now up against anybody uh, with the amount of the time it takes to turn around the test, the number of testing places that we have that are geographically dispersed. Also, that we've, we've resolved any issues there may have been about uh, those who were uninsured, whether they would have to pay for it. So I feel very comfortable where we are today with the amount of testing that's being done. And on a pos very positive note, that's not just going to help the city of Mobile, but um, it was uh, LabCorp, I think, that came out with the personal testing where you can test uh, yourself at home. I don't know exactly when that test will be available, but that's a huge step in a direction that you know, a week ago, I don't think anybody would have predicted that on this day that you would have known that that was, you know, had been done, been FDA approved, and would eventually be available to the public. So we're in a much better place uh, testing than we were. And I'll be glad for the commissioner or the doctor to say anything if they want to. Okay? This question is for Dr. Eichel. There's talk about reopening. Is there a real concern or worry if we open up too soon about a second wave of infections? And part two to that question, are we ready to open, reopen? Uh, very, two, two questions. One is, uh, do, does Bert Eichel and the Mobile County Health Department have concerns about a second wave? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, we have no immunity to COVID-19. Everybody has worked very, very hard at stay at home. The curve seems to be flattening. And somebody asked me, he said, have we reached our peak? And my comment is, it's like, what's the final score of the football game? Until the final play and the clock runs out, I can't tell you what the final score is. So we could have an instance where we had a significant increase in the number of cases uh, if something that the, some people do not uh, do what they're supposed to do. Uh, which could be adversely impacting, but everybody as we move forward must be cautious about the six foot distancing and uh, washing their hands frequently because the potential for a second wave, history, if we don't learn from our mistakes of the past, we're likely to repeat them again. And so, yes, that until there's a vaccine, uh, and I hope everybody, there won't be any concern about taking this vaccine. This is really important, like every vaccine, but I hope there won't be a lot of controversy when the vaccine becomes available. Your second question. Are we ready to reopen? Are we ready to reopen? Uh, I would say in some form or capacity, we need to come up with a plan. Uh, I look every day uh, at a picture of the U.S., uh, the discovery, uh, you know, uh, spacecraft coming back in on reentry. Uh, it didn't reenter well, and there was complete loss of life. So I use that as a reminder to me personally. Every single day, hanging in our office is the spacecraft dis discovery because reentry is extremely important. We have to work out the details to help people get back online with their businesses uh, and the economy, but we need to do it safely. I don't want to have uh, an increase in death rate. In fact, I'd prefer the end result of public health with COVID-19 to be zero, uh, but uh, we just have to come up with a plan, work with businesses, educate people, uh, and people need to take it seriously uh, as we go forward. So. Uh, yes, I think we have, you know, sheltered in place. We need to kind of be like uh, the prairie dogs. We need to kind of come out of the hole, but everybody be looking around uh, and ready to bark if we see trouble coming. Next question. 
There are currently plans on Facebook for a protest in Mobile over the stay at home order. Is the city concerned? Does the city has, have a plan if this happens on May the 2nd? What is the plan? So um, we have a plan and uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Next question. What is your reaction to Governor Ivey's order to keep the stay at home order in place? So this is uh, my reaction and that is, is that when she threw, um, when she set the date of April 30th, that was based on information that she had at the time, the data that she had available. So she made the decision, hoping to get us past the peak. I think that was part of the thought process. I think the information that she had at hand in the last couple of days is that she's not 100% certain that we are past our peak. And so there was no reason to open up sooner, uh, especially when you start thinking about the impact that we have spent so many days already uh, in the uh, stay in place order that she didn't want that to have been a wasted effort. And this is me, this is not something she's told me, but I think it makes, uh, to me it makes common sense is that she wants to make sure that we have built upon the sacrifice that has already been made. I know that she is looking forward to the future to, so she can give better news to everybody. Um, and so we'll see how that turns out. But you're welcome to comment. I second what the mayor said. I think the, the governor is, is working on the best available data. We had, uh, you know, health officer orders that came out earlier on. They've been extended based on the data. I think this has got to be real-time, real data analysis as we move forward uh, with no vaccine and no cure for this particular disease. So it's, it's uh, is there going to be an extenua continuation of the existing order? As it stands right now, I do not think so as the health officer of Mobile County, but I think the governor's going to be very cautious, and I think she's going to get the best available data she can uh, in order to make the best decision she can for the people of the state of Alabama. We have one last question before final comments. Has the city or the committee submitted its recommendation to the governor? If so, please provide details. So the committee itself is not, the, the Unified Command has not made a recommendation to the governor on what, what our collective viewpoint is on reopening at this point in time. Uh, the only thing that uh, we have done recently is that uh, we saw, uh, sent the governor a letter recently from the city of Mobile uh, that there are some uh, things that sh could be considered as you phase the opening. There are some of our smaller retail stores that uh, probably from the initial order, have, if you were going back to be re have an opportunity to redo that, maybe you would have done it just a little bit different. So we pointed out some of those retail outlets that we think could open uh, readily without being a threat to the community or to those who may uh, go to those outlets. Um, and so I don't know if the health department's made any recommendation on the uh, county commission, but I don't think so. Yeah. Your final comments? Yeah, final comment is that, um, you know, we're, we have learned a lot, uh, and I'm speaking um, from the city's perspective, and unlike the things that we've said in the past where we knew how to handle a hurricane because we've done that, um, you know, we're keeping, i would say, copious notes on things that if we had the opportunity to redo, that we would do them differently. But that's just part of this learning process. But all the decisions that are being made uh, from my perspective is that we're balancing uh, the lives and the health of our citizens with the livelihoods. And there's some that, have, let's say, run out of money. They think that we've weighed the balance in the wrong direction. Those who are at risk, you know, they're concern so concerned about us opening up too soon. And I can tell you that we are very sensitive to both of those concerns and we're doing the very best that we can based on the information that we have available. Uh, and we will push through this. And those who are struggling, there will be a way for them to recover in some form or fashion. 
I don't know exactly what that is, but we're, we're better poised today to come out of this um, together uh, than we were. I don't think we could have projected where we would be today, but I am uh, feeling good that, we're, um, that we've made great strides, and I think that we're close to the end as far as starting to ease back open. We're going to now listen to um, Commissioner Ludgood. When you're going out to do your retail shopping, wear some kind of face covering. It doesn't have to be a fancy mask, but please cover your face and it protects you and those around you. We ask you to please continue to maintain your six foot social distancing. You'll see in the stores, it'll be laid out for you. If you can't see it, then judge what six feet, where six feet would be and just step back. Do and continue to wash your hands as often as you can, wash your face. All of those things, those are the, we talked about some high level things, but those are the things that each and every one of us can do for ourselves and in our communities and with our families to make sure that we do what we can to help to contain this. And we thank you for your patience as we work through this. And I just want you to know that as we make these decisions that we come together and we use, try to use the best judgment and we bring together the, the smartest people, the people who have the best information, and we try to make those decisions that we know are going to be in the best interest. Sometimes I may want a particular course, or the mayor may, may want a, a course, or Dr. Eichel, but we pull it all together and we come up with what is best for Mobile County. Thank you. Again, I want to thank the uh, community for, for listening, taking this seriously. Personal responsibility is the most important thing that each and every human being in Mobile County can do. Be responsible for your personal health, be responsible for the health of your family members, and hopefully be responsible for the health of your neighbors uh, and friends. Do not gather, maintain the distance, as Ms. Ludgood said. Uh, and the mayor has said, uh, follow the rules, follow as we, as we advance forward. The last thing we want to do is be like 1918, the Spanish flu, and have the second wave be much worse on the scale of 10 to 20 times worse than what this first wave is. So again, personal responsibility and thank you to our team members for everything they're doing. Uh, we will uh, overcome this. Uh, we'll be stronger and a better community uh, and look back and say, wow, look how uh, history reflects the, the 2020 pandemic. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 10 News. I'm Chelsea Sayasan. Now we just heard from the Unified Command in a joint press conference. That includes Mayor Sandy Stimson, Dr. Bert Eichold, and Commissioner Ludgood. Now it appears that they will hold this conference every Wednesday at 2.30. The Unified Command explained that the purpose of this is to bring all of their assets together to get a better outcome and to keep everyone safe and healthy in Mobile County. Now the mayor says that there may be a connection to New Orleans in regards to Mobile County's high COVID-19 numbers. Dr. Eichold said cluster breakouts have been an issue here in the county, especially in some of our long-term care facilities. When asked how the city is helping with these facilities, Mayor Stimson said that the city has provided PPE, testing equipment, and testing for some of its employees. Dr. Eichold says preventing the spread is a priority right now in those facilities. He also says Mobile County Health Department is concerned about a second wave of COVID-19 19 until there is a vaccine. He says there is a concern. Commissioner Ludgood encouraged you to keep your social distancing and wear your face coverings when you are out. She says that they are planning for what's best for Mobile County. Mayor Simpson says that there is a plan to reopen, but he did not give us any of those details. Of course, we'll keep you updated on that. You can find this press conference and more on our Fox 10 YouTube channel and Facebook page. We will break down all the latest headlines for you coming up on Fox 10 News at 4 p.m. I'm Chelsea Sayasan. We'll see you soon.